Psalms 21, to the chief musician, a psalm of David. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord. And this, this psalm is about David, the king. We'll see in a moment. And David, who wrote this, third person singular, you say, listen, my strength didn't come from horses. Chapter 20, verse 7. My strength didn't come in my army. It came from the Lord. And in thy salvation, how greatly shall he, the king, rejoice? David. Now, David, and this is this happens often in the Bible. The first is writing, but he's like he's stepping out of himself, and and God does it himself sometimes too. And just writing third per person, and David's everything that I am is because of the Lord, and that's what I will glory in. The Lord, not me. Thou God has given him. David, his heart's desire. And it's kind of funny because when we come to the issue of Bathsheba, God will tell David through Nathan the prophet, you know, if there's anything I would, you would ask me for, I would have given it to you. You had no business setting your eyes upon Uriah's wife. I've given you this kingdom. I've given you victory over Saul. We all sin. And has not withholding the request of thy lips. Selah. Musical rest. And then also a reference to the, to the second coming of Jesus Christ. The tribulation period. What could be the, the request of the Jews in the tribulation period? Let it end. And I don't know if at some point. With the study of, of Daniel, and if they're going to get into the New Testament, I don't know if the Jews are going to realize when they're in the tribulation period, all right, we got seven years. And when you read the New Testament, the Gospels, and, they, and the Lord Jesus Christ says, in the midst of that period, there's a time when the desolation of abomination is spoken by Daniel, and you got three and a half more years. And like I said, somebody's going over to the Peter and put Bibles over there. And I don't know if they're going to turn to the New, because the Jew will not go to the New Testament today. He sticks to the Old Testament. And I wonder if he's going to have the, the well, what's his New Testament say? Will they get to the book of Revelation? And, ah, this is, put the newspaper down. This book of Revelation is today's news. This is what happened yesterday. This is what's happening right now. And according to this, this is what's going to happen tomorrow. And according to this, our Messiah is going to come. I, I don't know. For thou, God, prevented him with blessings of goodness. Now, you read that three or four times. You get it? God prevented David with blessings of goodness. And what the wording is, it may say, you know, well, God stopped the goodness of David. That's not true. What the, what the verse is saying, how David is saying it, God, when it comes to goodness, you never stopped. You kept it coming and coming and coming. Now, here's what you see is not Jesus Christ. Thou, God, says a crown of pure gold on his head, David's head. Now, when Jesus Christ comes back, the Bible says in Revelation 19, he has many crowns. And when you read the life of David, when they took over Jebus, the city, which is Jerusalem, the Bible says that they took the, the crown off that king and they crowned David with that crown. David in his song said, listen, yeah, I took that crown from, from Jebus' head, the king, but God, it is you that allowed me to put that crown on. When was the last time any of our presidents gave the honor and glory that God has put me in the Oval Office? 
oh, you know, the people, the red states and the people, the blue state, that's the one who did it. We got to go out. To, you know, you never say in a comp on the, on the campaign trail, you know, you know, oh, we want your we want your votes. We kiss your babies and, and all. You never see the guy get down and say, hold on, folks, wait a minute. Everybody that's in this assembly at this convention, everybody get down on your knees. Let's give God the praise. Now, you, you can root for the Democrats, and you can root for the Republican, and you can be this, and you can be that. But you give me a president that'll bow down before the media, bow down before all the people, bow down before the nation, say, I'm going to give God the honor and glory. That's the president I will lift up. Other than that, he could be just lying to you. Somebody in the back room say, hey, you want to please the Baptist? Yeah, I do. Do this. But say this. And over here, you got to please these people, and you got this guy with the speech. Listen, they're fooling you, and you're being fooled. And David, throughout his entire life in the study of David, gave God the glory all the time. No one rehearsed his speech. And Christians today are fooled by the politics of Democrat, Republican, and whatever. That man is pays people to do to make you happy. This should not be through the grapevine. Oh, he's a Christian. He loves the Lord. No, it should be right out open. And believe me, if any president, Republican or Democrat, was a true Christian of the Lord Jesus Christ and lived to the Bible, the media would be absolutely trying to crucify him. Looking for every flaw. Oh, they're doing that right now against you know the the, the current president. That ain't what. The... No, that's not persecution. All they live godly shall suffer suffer persecution. That guy's living godly because he you know, that guy he's doing this and doing that. Let's see you do something with the Bible, chapter and verse. David does it outright in the open. His whole life. He asks life of thee. That's the, that's not Jesus. Jesus did not go to God, you know, give me life. Jesus Christ was born to suffer and die according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. And if you take that verse and apply that to, to in the garden in the cup, you have deceived the scriptures and you need to repent of your sins and get right with that with God because the cup is not death. The cup is the sins of man. The Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. Jesus had no problem with dying. He knew he was coming up. And he knew exactly what time he'd come up. Like he knew when he's dealing with Mary and he's dealing with Martha. I know what I'm going to do. Lazarus is coming out of that grave at whatever time it was on his watch. This is David. And thou God gave it him even length of days forever and ever. That's the sure mercies of David. David may be dead now, but he ain't dead. He's alive. And he's going to be live in the millennium. And he's going to be live in, in eternal life. And he lived to be a ripe old man. He lived so old they had to hire a woman to come just to give him heat. He lived so old he's, he's a king that gave his throne to his son. And then he just relaxed the rest of his retirement years. And I would assume Solomon would come every once in a while. Dad, I got this problem. Can you help me? So, life comes from God. There is a possibility you can outlive what God wanted you to live. There's a king, I forget his name in the Bible, but he, he, God said, hey, listen, set your house in order. You're going to die. He, he turned to the wall. He, he repented, and he, he, he prayed to God. He sought, and God said, okay, I'm going to have 15 years to him. And then there are people who lose their life early. And I Sapphira, they go up live before Peter about the Holy Ghost and, the, and, and God himself, and they drop dead very early in life. I believe God has a set date for us, and it can be added or it can be subtracted by what we do. His glory is great in thy salvation. God, David's glory is great with God's salvation. 
Well, how can you say that? You know, David and glory, how great. Look what the Bible writes about him. That guy had twice in his lifetime, he had his seer enemy right there in his grasp, and David played the man and did well. Everybody around David, kill him, let's kill him, let me kill him. David's like, nope, can't touch the Lord's anointed. God will do it. That took character. That took a little character for, for a little shepherd boy to go up to a giant and get all, listen, all Israel's coward. David's brother, oh, you know, shepherd boy, you think you're all big in that. Yeah, you're the one that took the, took the, the giant down. You guys were off hiding in the bushes. Honor and majesty hast thou laid upon him, David. Honor and majesty. He was beloved of God and David beloved God. David got something that all set for Solomon, uh, Old Testament saints did not get. David committed adultery and he murdered and he still went to glory. The sure mercies of David. You didn't get that when you're in the Old Testament. You didn't get life from adultery. You didn't get life from murder. And there are other crimes. That's it. You're done. There's no sacrifice. Not David. When Nathan the prophet came up to him. He said, this is, you know, this man, he had this little ewe lamb, and he took care of it. And along came this rich guy, and he he devoured that lamb. And for, he said, that man, man, he it's four sheep he owes. He says, thou art the man. David got down on his knees and repented to the Lord. I have sinned against God. And God says, I like that so much. It's in the book and it's in Psalms. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. And hast made him exceedingly glad in thy countenance. That's the face. David's face is lit up. Like, you know, you walk in the house, they have a surprise party for you. Oh, yeah. The Bible says he was beautiful. He was ruddy. I don't know if he lost that face, but right here it says his face was just joy. Man, David wrote about times of life. I'm upset. I'm depressed. I'm angry. I'm, I'm, they're trying to kill me. I, I'm overwhelmed. And it says that, oh, God gave him good times. God gave him happiness. God gave him joy. For the king trusteth in the Lord. Now read this song, chapter 20, verse 7. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I bet you there's many silent prayers that are not recorded of David on the battlefield preparing for battle. He prayed to God. And through the mercy of the Most High God, he shall not be moved. When Jesus Christ takes his throne, David's throne, David will be the prince of the land. Thy hand, God's hand, shall find out all thy enemies. Now we switch. We're going from the king, verses 1 to 7. David the king. Now we're looking at the enemies. And it is recorded in the Bible that whosoever curses that Jew will be cursed themselves. You curse David, he's a Jew, he's the king of the Jews, like Jesus Christ, and you're in trouble. Thy hand shall find out all thy enemies. Saul, Philistines, his own family. Thy right hand, oh, there's Jesus Christ, shall find out those that hate thee. And then go ahead, apply that application to the tribulation period. Thou shalt make them as a fiery oven in thy anger. That's hell. That is a descriptive term for H-E-L-L. -L. A fiery oven. And there's no mercy and grace like Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo. When they go in that fiery oven, they stay in that oven. Shadrach, Meshach, and Luke, they came out with the Lord. There was no suffering. There was no torment. 
the Lord shall swallow them up in his wrath. So what does John say? He that has not the Son shall not see the wrath, shall not see life, but the wrath, scripture with scripture, don't mess with the Bible. Hell. David spoke and sung about hell. And the fire should devour them. Now, okay, there you go. See? No, the fire of the second coming of Jesus Christ, that fire coming out of his mouth, is going to devour the bodies. It's going to be ashes. But when their soul goes into hell, that's not devour. It's forever just burning and burning. The Bible says the smoke of their torment shall rise forever. There is their soul and there is their flesh in verse 9. When we come marching after Jesus, people, it's the ashes. Oh, there goes another enemy of Israel. There goes another enemy of Israel. There, you mustn't help Israel. Come on with us. You know, the sheep. Oh, there's another enemy. Oh, grab that person. He must be a sheep. Their fruit, the enemies of Israel, shall thou, God, destroy them from the earth. Death. And their seed, their children, from among the children of men. Because as father does, his son will do. For they intended evil against thee, They attended evil against thee, and I gotta mark that one down in my notes over here, because against thee, that's God. But who did they act upon? David and the Jews. So what did God do? He took it personally. You've got Paul, well, Saul. On the road to Damascus, he's dealing with Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, why persecute thou me? At no time did Saul ever persecute Jesus. He persecuted Christians and Jesus said, I take it personally. And when you persecute the Jews, God and Jesus say, hey, you're doing it to me. Don't mess with them Jews. They imagine, think of mischievous device. Ah, uh, incinerators, making them run in circles, and you know the, the one who's last, you shoot them, then you shoot them all. All the imagination of the Nazis against the Jews. And then yet what the Antichrist will think of to get rid of them? Which they are not able to perform. So there are some imaginations of the heathen that, hey, this is how I'm going to get the Jew. This is how I'm going to kill the children. And God's like, uh-uh, no, you're not. And God may give them a freakish mind or God may even take their life. If the devil had his way throughout the scriptures, every Jewish woman of Jesus Christ in the family, they would have been barren and would have no children at all. Sarah, Rebecca, then there was a battle between Leah and, and Rachel, and she was barren. So there are things that people think against the Jewish people that God says, nope, you ain't going to do it. Can you imagine if Adolf Hitler wasn't killed? Well, I mean, he would have died of that. Can you imagine if we did not win the war in World War II, how bad it would gotten? Why was Hitler put down? Why was Hitler stuck? Because we had the greatest powers of all. No, you didn't. God said that was enough. That's enough. Now you just go over there in your little bunker over there and you just set yourself a fire or whatever how you died. I'm done with you. Therefore thou shalt make therefore shalt thou make them turn their back when thou shalt make ready thine arrow upon thy strings, a bow and arrow, against the face of them. 
They're going to retreat from Jesus Christ and going to get shot in the back. They're going to get the million dollar wound in their butt. And they're going to see Jesus. They're going to do about face and run and they're going to get the butt wound. What's that butt wound mean? You didn't advance in the attack. You retreated in the track. Million dollar butt wound. Be thou exalted, Lord God, Jesus, in thine own strength. So we sing and praise thy power. There's a millennium. David, one day he's coming in and he's dancing, he's leaping. We're bringing the ark and one woman was against him. He said, I don't care. I'm going to sing before the Lord. I'm going to have joy before God. 